There's one back there, too. Are we live yet? Good evening, good evening, good evening. We are glad you are here tonight. Ha! We're excited to uh, have you with us tonight. Revelation chapter 13. There's more people here than I expected because this is a tough, tough chapter. Uh, we're going to make it as pleasant as we can, uh, but, but it is a tough chapter nonetheless. So we are glad you're here. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Hi out there on Facebook and uh, YouTube. We're glad you're out there with us tonight. Uh, if you uh, have questions, you can type them in out there. If you have a question in here, walk up to the mic. If you don't have questions, you're smarter than I am, which is good because you should be smarter than I am. But um, lots of lots of things tonight. She's passing out a handout that has about 8 million scripture on it. Uh, we got stragglers coming in back there. Ha! Come on in, stragglers. Uh, we're glad to have you tonight. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for who you are, for what you do. You're just an awesome God. We, we love you so very much. And, and Lord, sometimes I think we... Uh, Sometimes we could just take advantage of you because we love you so much and we forget how good you are to us. So thank you for reminding us daily that you're always with us. We give you honor tonight. We give you praise. Touch our time together in your word. In your precious name, amen. 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 So I'm going to give you an intro real quick, and there's one on your page there. I don't have the page, so Miss Wendy's going to hand me one. I uh, have my mask and my wag and all that good stuff. Uh, we're ready. Um, two witnesses are dead. They've been taken up. The dragon got kicked out of heaven. He's here. Uh, Satan has been cast out of heaven. And we can see it for a while. It jumps around. But tonight we're going to try a little different. We're going to try outline form. I'm going to try to lay this out in outline form, which won't be quite as much detail, but hopefully it will give you a good solid detail for what you need so at the top of your page it says pastor's note you ready for pastor's note chapters known for the mark of the beast how many's heard of the mark of the beast you've heard that most of your life right you've heard about that but tonight we'll be looking at an overview and not focusing on the mark of the beast as many do some things to remember the mark of the beast and the pre-trib mid-trib post-trib are all things that can be debated uh, from many different angles, and let me let me say this: uh, you know, the thousand-year millennial reign, the seven years of uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb, is that in heaven? Is it on earth? Uh, it depends on how you read it. It really depends on how you see it. So my note is here: a debate on who is or who is not right on a particular subject in Revelation is before you debate on that. Make sure you yourself and your uh, neighbors that you're debating with know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Make sure you got everything in tune before you debate an argument that can be debated from every side. You know, I've always studied Scripture from a pre-trib rapture because I believe pre-trib. But now I've been studying some from post-trib and mid-trib, and i got to tell you, they've got some pretty good arguments too. I, I, it's not going to change the way I believe it because I don't want to go through that thing, right? I want out of here. But at the end of the day, there are some things along the way that could be left open. So the key isn't to say, oh, well, I'm only this way, period. The key is to say I'm ready to go no matter what. The key is to say my heart is right with God, and if I'm here for till the beginning, till the mid, or till the end, I'm going to serve him. Uh, as Kurt would say, I like ice cream. You're not going to change his mind. He'll eat some tonight when he gets home. Uh, you're not going to change his mind. He likes ice cream. So with that being said, we're going to start, um, and, and we're going to do an overview tonight, a little bit different. Uh, I used some different commentators this week, uh, some different things to try and make an overview out of it. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway. Verse 1 and 2, if you have a question, step to the mic and ask it. Uh, and, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. 
And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. So we see a beast coming up out of the sea. Uh, now John's vision transfers him from being in heaven to standing on the side of the sea in his vision. And he says, uh, he sees this uh, beast coming up out of the sea. The two witnesses have already been slain. Now here's what some other scripture, which is in your notes there. Daniel calls this beast the prince that shall come. That's what he calls him in Daniel 9.26. In Isaiah, he's called the wicked, Isaiah 11, 4. Christ calls him the abomination of desolation. That's in Matthew 24, 16. You have these hopefully all in your notes. Um, Paul labeled him as the man of sin or the son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. Now, just prior to this, John's been watching the woman, the dragon, when all of a sudden he is standing on a seashore. And he's observing a beast rising out of the sea, similar in appearance to the dragon. But it is not the dragon. Everybody understands that, right? Because in verse 2, it says the dragon gives him power. So now we know that we have major players. Christ, the woman, or Israel. Uh, we have the dragon, which is who? Satan. Satan. And now we have the first beast. The first beast is definitely a political power, if you will. We'll get into that a little more. Uh, but he's rising up out of the sea, which is symbolic. And I'll throw some nuggets at you here, which I actually did not call it till now. Uh, but it represents a man in verse 8, uh, and it tells us the people of the earth will physically worship him. Uh, he gets his power from the dragon. Now, before we get on down into this, let me throw this at you, and I'm going to throw this at you about 35 times tonight. Go ahead. We'll get into that. Yes, actually there is. Uh, and I'll throw out some, some of reasons why, and then I'll throw out some nuggets. The question was, since he didn't go to the mic uh, like he was supposed to, the question was, is there a reason this beast looks this way? Yeah, it's, it's telling, foretelling. We'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but one of the things I want you to see is, and I want, I want to throw this out real quick. I want you to get this. How many people know that in America... Right now, if the election was today, the nation would be split, right? No matter who wins, Democrat or Republican, the nation will be split. You with me? So why do most people that vote on the conservative side vote that way? Huh? Because you were raised that way? I vote conservative because of my moral convictions. Okay, now I say that for a reason. I could not vote liberal because of my moral convictions. I believe that every child once conceived is a life and that it has a right to live. That is my belief. I will never change that. That's the way I believe it. Uh, I don't condemn anyone that, that has had an abortion or anything like that, but that is the way I believe it. Okay, so with that said, somehow I don't think mine's on the right one. Um, if you notice something here, in this chapter, you're going to notice a theme. It says that the people will be made to worship. Bow down to. Bow down to. How many believe that in America right now, 2020, that our nation would bow down to any entity that came up and said they were God. We are not at a place in America where 50% 50 50 of the people, we're on our way, don't get me wrong, people are falling away at a high rate, but when people are saying, oh, this is the mark of the beast, this is, please understand something. Right now, when it says all people will bow down and worship, 50% of Americans are um, hopefully more are not going to bow down. So we need to understand that one of the things that he's talking about here isn't following a monetary system. 
the monetary system or the money will certainly be one of the main reasons people fall away because they'll want food and drink and, and all those things. But as of right now, I don't believe an Antichrist system, my opinion, could be effective in America because the 50% that are out there are normally the hardworking Americans who are going to, if, if you try to make them worship something and they don't, you're going to literally shut this country down immediately. There are other countries the same way that are God-fearing countries. Not all countries, but some countries, many countries out there. So while we know that we're in the last days, please understand, we're not at this point yet. We're heading there quickly, but take a deep breath. We're not there yet. So just wanted to throw that out. If you disagree, that's cool. Somebody may write me an ugly letter online. I don't know, but... Uh, but I have to look at this from a standpoint of the mark of the beast is not about buying and selling. While that hinders buying and selling, it's about take it and worship. You must deny Christ and worship the beast. It's a form of worship to a beast. You must proclaim he is God. Now we'll get to that in just a minute, but let me give you some more nuggets. Uh, the sea here that he's talking about predominantly is referred to in Scripture as the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, therefore, it's commonly assumed that the beast man will come from one of the lands surrounding that area. The seven heads and ten horns represent power and authority, and in this case, a league of nations and the leaders that are ultimately under the power of Satan. So Daniel saw the vision and interpreted it as, Jim, you were asking, as the lion, as the Babylonian Empire. Uh, the bear as the Medo-Persian Empire. The leopard as the Grecian Empire. That's Daniel 7. And I'll throw a nugget in there, but let me say this. Uh, more than likely, the Antichrist, the figurehead of the Antichrist, will come from the Middle East. So I don't know if you remember when Ronald Reagan won the election in 1980. Uh, people said his name is, is 666. All, he has six letters in all three of his names. So he's the beast. Um, people have called someone the beast because the numbers of for, for the entire history of the world. And, uh, you know, if anybody, in my opinion, should have been concerned when they were stamping numbers on the Jews, right, for the Holocaust, boy, that was, I mean, that was, but now also in America, let's be real. Uh, a lot of you in this room, even some of the older ones have tattoos. It's become very common to get your body marked. It's not... Uh, the thing that it once was. A and so it is easily over time conditioning people that a mark on your body is not a big deal. Uh, I have those too, so I won't argue that. But So let me throw something at you real quick. Uh, let me go up to verse 2. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard and his feet as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh, and I'm going to throw this in and we will... Um, We'll move on. This is just a thought. And it, it, it probably should add it later on, but in one spot in this chapter, it talks about the lion was like an eagle and he had his wings plucked. What is represents America? If there is a mention in this that relates to America, this is certainly could be a lion, which is the, the head, the king of the jungle. We're the only superpower left in the world right now, right? The true superpower. And then it had its wings plucked. Uh, just food for thought. That's not in Scripture. That's just me saying something to think about. Move along. Uh, all of these were future when Daniel wrote them. Uh, and that's in Daniel chapter 7. But history has proven the prophecies to be correct and true. Uh, all three of these empires have ruled or dominated God's people. The Babylonians... Uh, the, the Medo-Persians, they've all controlled Israel at one point or another. So John sees them in reverse order since he's looking back over history. Uh, but please keep in mind that out of this league will rise a very charismatic leader. The man is a beast, and he's head of the league. Um, if you believe that the, and I'll say it like that, if you believe that the Muslim religion will be 
the Antichrist will be led by the Muslim religion or that it will be the Muslim religion, then there are some key leaders growing up in the world right now. Some of Saddam Hussein, some of Osama bin Laden's. Uh, do you know he has a son out there that uh, is, is very charismatic, uh, wears leather jackets, uh, western clothing, and just, just uh, ladies would call him easy on the eyes, and, and a very charismatic leader uh, that is alive today. Some of the Muslim faith believes that the Maharaja, is that right, or the Mahdi, uh, the, one of the two, uh, that, that he is alive on the earth. And that's the seventh son or something like that. I don't know all the details, but just food for thought. I believe the Antichrist will come out of the Middle East, out of the Medo-Persian area, out of Babylon, that area. Gusick writes it like this. Ancient Israel did not like the sea. Did you know that? There's some historians that say this is pretty accurate, and then there's some scripture to back it. Solomon had a navy, but King Hiram of Tyre had all the sailors, and they worked for Solomon. You can find that in 1 Kings 9, 26 and 27, by the way. Solomon had a navy, but ultimately they thought the sea was unruly, unholy, and wild. And they didn't like the sea. So uh, Psalm 74, 12 and 13 says, For God is my king from the old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea serpents in the water. Psalms 89, 8 and 9, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord, your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you steal them. Isaiah 57, 20, but the wicked are like the troubled sea, which it cannot rest when waters cast up mire and dirt. Uh, so if for the Jewish people to see this beast rise up out of the sea could have been symbolic of wild and unruly also does that make sense any questions let me go back over your animals one more time the first three animals are a lion in daniel a picture of the babylonian empire who else tried to rebuild the babylonian empire saddam hussein he even had uh, uh nebuchadnezzar some of the bricks on some of his um palaces there uh, he had that carved in him, Nebuchadnezzar, because he believed somewhere, or at least the, the theme is, he believed he was reincarnated, that he was the Nebuchadnezzar. The, Iraq is where the Babylonian Empire was, and so that's what he believed. So when Daniel sees it, and then it's described again in Revelation, thousands of years later, it's a picture of the Babylonian Empire. They did rule with a strong hand at one point, and they could be one of the revised nations to rise up uh, the bear is a picture of the medo-persian empire the medo-persians the persians you've heard of them throughout the scripture uh, and all the things they've done uh, and then the leopard is the greek empire and then a fourth animal was a dreadful indescribable beast which shared the most terrifying characteristic of the previous beast yet represents the final world order under the leadership of a satanic dictator. So let me throw this out real quick. What do we believe right here? John is seeing the beast. The beast is the Antichrist. He is uh, led by Satan himself, who, which is a dragon, which for all literal purposes, he's on the earth as a dragon at this point, right? So, so he brought a third of the angels with him, now you're seeing that they may be physically seeing demons. They may be seeing demons flying around at this point. Uh, they may not, but in a literal sense, they could have. So Daniel, Daniel prophesied this. John is telling that it's coming. And so when he presents this beast coming up, we believe with, with as accurate as possible that this literally is a, uh, a Middle Eastern rising up that becomes the beast. Um, it goes all the way back, if you studied it out, and I'm trying to hurry, but, but it goes all the way back to um, Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael. Some take it all the way back to Cain and Abel. Definitely back to 
um, Jacob and Esau. Some take it all the way back to there, and it's, you can actually trace it out. But what it boils down to is um, Islam and Christianity. So that's what it would boil down to, is Islam and Christianity. Um, I'm not saying Islam's the Antichrist. I'm saying that that's what it appears, because I know we'll catch some flack from that. But uh, I'm not trying to stir anybody, but again, it will come from that area, which is predominantly an Islamic area. Everybody got that? All right, verse 3. Have I got any bad flack out there yet? <laughs> uh, and I saw one of the heads, and it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the, wonder, the world wandered after the beast. Verse 4, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. There's that word worship again. And they worshiped the beast. They worshiped the beast. They worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now think about this. Up to this point, no one could defeat God's two witnesses. They're proclaiming Christ is the Messiah. Now all of a sudden, this guy shows up. The two witnesses are killed. And he has power and authority over everything. And if you didn't believe God up to this point, it's going to be real easy to believe this guy now. Does that make sense? Scripture doesn't tell us who the nation is or who the head will be, but we do know, however, this nation will best suit the nature and purpose of the dragon who empowers him. Uh, and we do know that Scripture says that uh, in the Middle East is where the seat of Satan is uh, from time past. Uh, it's interesting to note that Saddam Hussein has spent millions of dollars rebuilding Babylon. Uh, Babylon is modern Iraq. It is geographically center of all the world's land masses. Wherever and whichever this nation is, it will also become the center of worship. So understand this. And I know, I know, I know that people don't want to hear this because they prefer to follow the modern fads. But hear me when I say this. This is not about whether you take a vaccine or not. This is not about wearing a mask. This is about worshiping a false god. And it will literally be worship of a god. Uh, how do you know someone's worshiping a god? If you deny God's power, if you deny God's um, law and worship something other than that, then you pretty much can relate you need a better relationship with Christ. Plain and simple. Um, I don't know how else to put it. I'll, I'll move on. But all these nations are, as well as their respective religions, will unite as you see this pseudo-death and resurrection of the beast. Pseudo-death means looks like mimics, if you will. Uh, and, and, and let me throw this out, too. Have you noticed that Satan is always a copycat? Throughout the Old Testament, Satan was a copycat. Now we're seeing him do the same thing. He wants to do what God did. Because he wants to be God. Uh, with all the angels and demons possibly flying around the cosmic disturbances, no one will longer doubt the existence of a God. And they will choose this Satan as God since he appears to be the most powerful and he is among them, which is, makes him more real. You know, our God is, is here. We know that he's in us. Uh, you felt him today, I hope. I hope in your prayer time or in worship or, man, I, that song they played just pre-worship, I just, man, it just makes my heart race. Um, but here he's going to be before them. There's going to be this leader of these ten nations, and then there's going to be this deity, and, man, he's going to be able to do things that no one's ever done before on this earth, that at least none that anyone on the earth today has seen. And all of a sudden, people are going to know that there's a God because it's, it's happening, and they're going to buy that this guy's the God. Why is it a blessing to read this book? So you know what to look for. What to look for is false and what is real. It, may, it is just that many will choose Satan as God since he appears to be the most powerful. He had power to overcome God's two witnesses, and now he seemingly can overcome death. 
Jesus was resurrected, so now this cat's going to be resurrected, right? A mortal wound to the head and healed. Uh, there's going to be such a great following of the beast and the dragon. If you think about it, so, and I guess I, I'm, let me ask you a question. Are you 100% certain of where you're at with God that you wouldn't be confused? Do you know that you know that you know enough of the character of God to know the difference between something that does everything God does but with a different character? God's character is to love people. And the character of this will be to destroy. Do what? It'll be full power. It'll be crazy to see. I, I don't want to be there for it, but uh, uh, you're not going to stay for that, right, Kurt? You're leaving in the rapture, right? Okay. All right. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him and to continue 40 and 2 months. Uh, on your page, and if you're online watching and you want the page, Miss Wendy will email it to you. Uh, if you don't have email, you can get one Sunday. Uh, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy, verse 6, against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So he's not only coming against God, but those that are already in heaven. During the last three and a half years, the beast will curse and defame the Lord, his holiness, his love, his law, his grace, and his people. He has but a short time and can no longer stand before the Lord to accuse the brethren, so he turns it loose on the remainder. No doubt this thing, this, this demon, this Satan, knows his time is up according to Scripture, and he's going to do everything he can to destroy people. Why? Because we were created in the image of God. He does not like anything that was created in the image of God. If you can't kill the beast, you kill the if you can't kill God, you kill his kids, right? All right. Any questions on verse five and six? Pretty simplified for some of this here for a few minutes, but verse seven, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. There's that word again. When we start talking about that they're going to sneak in the mark of the beast on us, this is about an absolute, you must worship another God. You must deny Christ and worship another God. It's not something that's going to be snuck in on you. I will never believe that it's one of those things. I will refuse to believe that the character of my God says, I'm going to give my son to die for you, and then I'm going to get you the first chance I get. Because he's had a lot of chances to get most of us. And he hadn't done it yet. And all that dwell upon the earth, verse 8, and all the earth shall worship him whose names are not written. You can look that word worship up. It literally means to worship. Are not written in the book of life or the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Now this is John, in my opinion, crying out, please listen. Please listen. You don't want to be there for this. Verse 10, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Uh, I'm going to read you some, a couple of, of scripture here and a couple of things, and then we'll, we'll dig for a minute. Uh, these are not the resurrected saints, but those who have come through to know the Lord through the tribulation. We still believe, still teaching it from my belief of pre-trib. Romans 8, 29 through 30. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, when he predestined, he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What does that mean in a nutshell? He knows who's going to be saved. Everybody has an opportunity, but he knows. And yet he's still crying out to those that he knows won't receive it. Has anybody ever done that with your kids? You know they're not going to listen, but you plead anyway. You plead anyway, but you know they're not going to listen. Can you imagine how much if we do that with our hearts broken, how much God does that for his kids? Moving on. 
The Lord knows everyone who will accept him, and their names are written in the book of life. If you remember, uh, Revelation 3, 5, I believe it is, says that uh, their name was blotted out of the book of life. So it does mean that you can actually lose your salvation. Your name could be blotted out. Uh, these saints from the tribulation will not bow at the cost of their own lives. If you're not at a place right now where you'd die for your belief in God, get there. Get there. If they said they're going to chop your head off if you don't deny Christ, try to get the prettiest smile for your head that you can when they take pictures of it. But I say this without jokes whatsoever. You better know that you know that you know. Because when it comes down to starvation and it comes down to no water and it comes down to everyone around you has everything and you have nothing and you are literally going to be killed, you better be secure in your knowing where you're at. Moving on. John begs, listen with your heart. He who has ears. If any man had a difficult time making a decision now, the beast is about to force them to make a decision. John reassures the saints in verse 10 that those responsible for the death of the saints will likewise be put to the death. And I read this from a commentator, this next line, and I didn't agree with it, but the more I studied it, I actually do agree with it. It says, you will now know that the dispensation of grace has ended. And at first I thought, you know, God will always save someone if they want to be saved. But I believe at the middle of the tribulation, when the Antichrist shows up and the beast shows up, I believe that everyone that's going to have received will have received. And that because it says that to die with a sword, you'll die with a sword, period. It's done. There is no grace at that point. And he goes over that a couple of times in that scripture. Uh, the death of the saints will likewise be put to death. So... There's a point of no return. Let me move on. Verse 11 and 12. Any comments? Y'all are quiet. There's a lot to take in here, and we're doing an overview. <laughs> and I beheld in another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Ah, there's another one of those markings. How many remember the scripture that says in the last days that they will, uh, they'll call good evil and evil good? Yeah, now, you know, we look at that in the sense of evil and good, right? But do you know one of the things that's being called evil right now? I saw a pastor do it tonight. I saw a pastor put it online tonight that if you're a follower, you're a sheep. And sheep is bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad to be a sheep, I know, right? <laughs> it's bad to be a sheep. And I actually posted on this pastor friend of mine's page, Jesus calls me a sheep. I'm, he, he's my shepherd and I'm proud of it. Because what they're doing now is they're trending people, even Christians, to say being a sheep's a bad thing. And all throughout scripture, Jesus calls us sheep. So be careful because things, even in the Christian world, you've, if you're on social media at all, you've seen Christians post, well, there they go following their sheep, their sheep. They're nothing but sheep. Yeah, I am. My daddy is king of kings and lord of lords. He's my shepherd and I'm his sheep. Moving on. Get me on a grump here. Ha. Ha. Wait a minute. He's coming. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power over the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwelleth therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This is who? This is the false prophet. We have Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. Wait a minute. An unholy trinity? There's not an image, is it? So the Father has all power, so the dragon thinks he has all power. The Son's the one to lead? That's the first beast, the Antichrist. And the false prophet only speaks of the beast. 
The Holy Spirit came to speak of Christ. If you don't know your God and His voice, it won't be as hard to be deceived as you think it will. Because He's going to give an image of. Does that make sense? He's going to look like. The word worship is used 60 times and always translated worship every single time. How many times has it told us that this would be about worshiping the beast? This would not be about your bank account, although it will affect bank accounts. But it will be about worship. It blows my mind how people skip 10 verses about worship to throw out there something that, that, that to scare people. Here's the third member of hell's unholy trinity, a demonic mime or of the Holy Spirit who glorifies Christ, the Holy Spirit. This parrot's mission is to cause people to worship the beast. As we said earlier, in his three times later in Revelation, he is called the false prophet. Second beast is the leader of the world religious system. He is the great harlot spoken of in chapter 17. That should be in your notes. I don't remember putting chapter 17 in there, but... Uh, some say he will be a pope or an ayatollah or a guru or a televangelist but most likely he'll be called the prophet uh, somehow these two satanic empowered men will become the closest of friends and at the same time that is the first is gaining world political power the other will be gaining the world's confidence as the only true prophet of God now, if we're really in the last days, these leaders could be alive on the earth today. How do I know that? Because God said that uh, the ones that saw Israel become a nation and Jerusalem become the holy city again would not pass away. This generation would not until uh, Christ returned. So we know that the generation from, was it 1948? And then 1967, Jerusalem became the holy city again. So sometime within a... 120 years if we go back to Noah and the flood 120 years from 1967 would be a last generation on earth we can't give an exact date we never will we're not going to try I'm not one of those guys but I can tell you that it is the last generation I used to think that's a good thing now seeing the world I'm not so sure uh, everybody good till now we good I'll, I'll overview it at the end but I want to get through this chapter um, and then we'll talk about what, if you want to stuff backpacks next Wednesday and take a break, or if you want to um, continue on. And we'll stuff backpacks on Tuesday night. Uh, and he does great wonders, verse 13, so that he make a fire come down from heaven. Hello, there he is being mimicking again. Uh, come fire down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which they would wound by the sword and did live. All right, let me break some of this down. The two witnesses of the Lord made fire come down from heaven. The false prophet and the beast must look, make God look inferior to them. So they're going to call fire down from heaven. Matthew 24, 24 says, For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. I hope that's in your notes. I think I'm missing some. Huh? Okay, all right. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, The coming of the lawless one is according to the works of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day of sin uh, will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I have not seen a ruler on the planet as of this time, that has proven himself to say that he's God and been able to prove by signs and wonders that he could relate to a supernatural being like that. 
Now, it's not to say people haven't proclaimed to be God. But listen to what it says. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. We're seeing that right now in great droves in America, especially falling away. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or is to be worshipped. So as he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So understand, 2 Thessalonians tells us that until this man is revealed, now he's giving you the layout here, you don't hear about the mark of the beast yet, right? But it says that the son of perdition will be revealed. So if it hasn't been shown, if the Antichrist has not been made known and proclaiming himself God yet, to say that the mark of the beast is on us right now is almost dishonoring God's word. Now, I know we don't like to hear that if we're the ones that, that want to see it all take place and go down now, but, but at the end of the day, we don't want to do contradict God's word to prove a point. So when the Antichrist is revealed, hopefully after the rapture, uh, when he's revealed, then this stuff will begin to move fast, and it'll begin to come into play. And I'll tell you now, some of the technology is already there. Uh, Sterling, you've studied some of the technology is there to make this stuff happen already. Uh, there's a lot of this that, that is out there. Uh, not everybody agrees, but to me, uh, cloning goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 6. Uh, when you begin to affect what is created in the image of God, uh, I don't know how y'all feel about that. I'm not going to get into it tonight, but uh, you don't mess with what was created in the image of God. His deception is very thorough. We must learn from this. Miracles are not necessarily of divine origin or not of design or divine origin. The man seems to have a natural aptitude for worshiping things. Uh, the false prophet gets little or no restraint as he commands worship of the beast. Did you hear that? He literally gets very little restraint because there's been such a falling away. America has not fallen away yet. You, you had 150 million people voted for a man who had never been a politician because he said he would put godly values back. They didn't vote for him on any other platform than the fact that he proclaimed to put godly values back. There's still a huge remnant of Christians in America, if not in other nations too. Moving on. Satan and the Antichrist have become close friends, and so has the false prophet. In my opinion, my opinion, her question was, could he not do these things outside of being near the Antichrist? I do not believe the false prophet has the power that the Antichrist has. Satan empowered anti the Antichrist. The false prophet can do many, many mighty things, but then let's take that a step further. Without the anointing of God on our lives, we can do nothing. So he had to be, uh, probably, since Satan's been kicked out, probably within proximity of to be able to do it. But then again, he wants to hang around with him anyway. And he's teaching people to worship. Did you notice that? Did I mention that? It's about worshiping him as God. It's about worshiping him as God. So be cautious what rabbits you chase in the world today because there are people out there that are putting things out there that would sound good to a Christian, but they have no truth in them whatsoever. But Christians grab them and run with them, and it really makes God look bad because it doesn't line up with God's Word. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Did I answer your question? All right. Uh, it is possible that the little images of the beast are made and sold so that every household can perform their daily worship of the beast. Uh, for sure, there is a large image made for the world to view and worship publicly. 
probably via satellite, of course. Verses 15, 16, and 17. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of the name. We have mentioned worshiping him as God for the last 15 verses before the mark of the beast is mentioned. I'm not telling you this thing isn't going to be ugly. I'm not telling you that scanning right now, you know, your phone, you can Apple scan, you can rub your phone and, and, and pay your bills and, and, and a cashless society. I understand we're working towards that. But what we haven't seen is worshiping someone proclaiming to be God on the earth, not in a large scale. So I believe that while I do believe this is lining up, I do believe there are uh, chips out there and things that, uh, that, that maybe even an implant in the skin that will be visible, that, that a mark. But I believe you're going to have to say, to take this, you're going to have to deny that there's any other God than Satan. I believe that, that it's not about any other thing than denying God. Because the only thing I can find in Scripture that will send someone to hell or damn their soul is denying Christ. And I can't see after 7,000 years, 6,000 years on the earth, him all of a sudden making a change to where it's about getting a flu shot. Now, do I want a vi vaccine? No. But, but if people remember... Before you could go to school, you had to take vaccines. You were required. This is not new. And I'm not going to harp because I get people mad. But, but please understand this. Don't take the mark of the beast and line that up with everything has got to line up with it. It's not. It's a one small part of what already has taken place to this point. That is a minute point at this place. If we, if we look it out, it says that the false prophet is literally at a place where he says, worship this guy, and the masses already do. It's not going to be like there's the tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of millions of people lined up fighting him at this point. Sadly. Comments or questions? soon as the image is formed, the prophet gives in the ability to talk, probably promoting himself and blaspheming God and also issuing commands to kill anyone who does not worship the image of the beast. The prophet immediately sets up registration centers and numbers and identity for worshipers. He classifies them in three different groups. Uh, those who have a logo or the mark, those that probably the bulk of the population those who have the name of the beast and those who is probably a little closer group that works closely for the plans and the purposes, uh, those who have his name or number, uh, they, they, will, they may be different for those in the inner circle and those that are fighting. Uh, the ones that refuse will not be able to buy or sell or anything of that nature. It will be, there will be some, I think, but they'll be limited. Uh, but let me go back to this. Don't put all your fears and anxieties on what the mark of the beast will be. Theologians for thousands of years have tried. I've got pages and pages of break it down. If you want them. Man, I mean, there is everything from Hitler to Ronald Reagan to Donald Trump. Is the Antichrist. Did y'all know that? I read it on the internet. It's got to be true. Marilyn Monroe, I think, once was the Antichrist. May have been for a Kennedy. We don't know. <laughs> but uh, moving right along. Don't get so caught up in trying to figure out who this is or who that is. I'll say it one more time and we'll close on chapter, verse 18. 
Go ahead. Sheep. <laughs> yeah, baby. Never mind. Why does a sheep make up minor like the beauty of the human body and emotions? Uh, it's a good question. I don't have a really good answer. Uh, I, if if I could give you my answer, what I think, but I didn't study it out. But what I think is the first commandment is, "Thou shalt have no other graven image before me." So I think to totally disrespect God, the God. That's a good theory, right? I mean, I don't know any better. I haven't studied that. Nobody's ever asked me that, actually. Very good. Now I'll go home and look at that. Uh, I will look at that and see. You'll expect an answer. It, it may be the exact same answer I just gave you. Um, people are so caught up today in trying to come up with the next revelation. And you know what the true mighty men of God that I'm seeing out there are doing right now? They're going back to the basics. Love God, love people. Go back to the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it has the power to change lives. It's the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what? Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. Well, who is the beast? I don't know. I don't want to know. I want to know the other guy. I want to know the other guy so well that I know when that guy shows up, I'm preaching. I better be good. We may go into preaching for a few months towards the end of this year instead of Bible study. We'll see, whatever God does. But it's good to know what other religions believe. But it's far greater to know your God intimately. Far greater. And if you want to know how to get caught up, it's like when we grew up and preachers preached, the Bible says John was bold in oil and didn't die. The old Fox Book of Martyrs says that. Not the Bible. But I heard that my whole life. And you hear things and, and God's word. God's word. All right. Here is wisdom. Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. I'm going to give you some highlights. That's all I have. I'm not giving you the other 8 million nuggets, but I'm going to give you some highlights real quick. If you want them, I'll email you my notes. Uh, the beast is a man. That man has a name. His name has a numerical equivalent, as all Hebrew names did. Uh, Jesus' name was uh, 7, right? 777, seven, seven, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that either. It might be in my notes, though. Uh, in English, it seems weird, but in Hebrew or the Greek language, and in some cases Latin, it is not strange at all. You see, each symbol used for the alphabet was also used for a number. For example, in Latin, the V is 5, X is 10, L is 50, and so on. In Greek, the language of the New Testament is Alpha is 1, Beta is 2, Iota is 10, uh, Aro is 100. To count the number of the beasts, one would simply add up the numbers attached to the letters in his name. I don't believe it's that simple. But that's how the layout they tell that it does. Uh, who is this man? No one knows. Many people could have names that the letters equal 666. You could have a name that equals 666 in Hebrew or Greek. It's not just the number of letters in your name, Timothy. But, uh, <laughs> but what each numeric value for each letter. The Hebrews gave a numeric value for each letter. Um, in Greek, the name uh, Chi X Stigma, 666. During the war, Christians said it was Hitler. Uh, in the 70s, folks said it was Kissinger. Uh, but, but it's all Greek to me. <laughs> I don't plan on being around for all this anyway. But the point is, watch and be aware. But better yet, make your decision now to watch the one who holds eternity. Spend your whole life. Man, I'm telling you, I spent years. And I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, I got a couple more minutes. I spent years studying prophecy. Years. Went to every prophecy conference known to man. Terry Stone, love him, know him personally. 
one of the greatest prophecy speakers of all time. He's, he's come out of a sabbatical, and now he's sharing a bunch of prophecies, and people are sending them to me, and I'm not watching them. If I can spend 25 minutes watching the next prophecy, I can spend 25 minutes with my Savior. Now, do I think it's important? Sure I do, but don't get so caught up. Don't get so caught up. Don't get so caught up. Bill Gates does not have human testing on the side of his building. It's photoshopped. It's not out there. Don't get so caught up in everything going on that we want to pin it on somebody. First of all, he will most likely be someone from the Middle East, from the Mediterranean Sea area, from the Babylonian, the Roman Empire, the revised Roman Empire. It'll be someone from the European, at least from the Middle East. And that's about 99% sure. So don't get caught up. Know your Savior. Hear His voice. Listen to what he's saying and trust him. And then when this comes, you either won't be here or you won't be fooled. One of the two. You either won't be here or you won't be fooled. Don't get caught up in the craziness of this world. Any questions or comments? You have, By the way, I gave you a week's worth of homework right there if you study out all those scripture. Tim, Comment. Sterling? Anybody? I don't know. I don't think so. I, because I believe it's supernatural, because Satan can do some supernatural things now, but, um, but this guy, I mean, this is going to be Satan incarnate. You know, this is going to be, uh, so I think he'll be able to do those things. If the false prophet can call down fire from heaven, then he can proclaim he's the Elijah reincarnated from uh, John the Baptist, right? I mean, he can. there's a lot that can be said there. So, again, I truly believe this whole book is set up for us to realize how close we need to be to our Savior. Uh, and if you're like me, there's so much going on in the world my, my prayer time has to be forced. I mean, I have to stop doing something and make myself go pray. And I, you know, I wish I wasn't that busy, but sadly, and it's my fault, but, but sadly, we get into a rut where um, we don't catch it. My brother preached Sunday morning on pray, 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 pray. I thought, man, what a sermon. That's a good message. You don't have to say much more than that. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. I don't have all the answers. God told me to break this book down for you. But what I do know is this. He said 365 times in the book, don't worry. This is not designed to scare or to make us worry. Should we be cautious? Absolutely. Should we guard what we do? Absolutely. But guard what you do in your heart more than anything because that's the key that's the key right there all right let's pray and then we will ask you real quick uh about next week what you want to do father thank you thank you thank you again for your word uh lord i don't like all of it to be honest some of it's scary but uh i trust you plain and simple you're my shepherd and i trust you i pray right now that every man woman that hears this, that, that is here tonight, God, that we will be so close to you that we'll know what you're saying and not what the world is saying. Your precious name, amen. amen. Do y'all want to stuff backpacks next Wednesday or you want to continue through Revelation and come out Tuesday night and stuff backpacks? Next Wednesday? You hate this book, don't you? Oh, you're going to be gone. <laughs> Okay, are y'all okay with stuffing backpacks next Wednesday? Tim? Um, uh, I don't care. 
I don't care. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. We'll let you know when we're stuffing backpacks. Have a good night. Jesus is Lord. <laughs>